Um, I wanted to ask about, because this is a wonderfully dark book, and yet it always feels fun. It's never like, oh, what a heavy, uh, mm-hmm. depressing thing. It's just there's some things that I wouldn't expect in a, in a, in a teddy bear story. So I'm going to read a quick passage from your okay. own book uh, to you uh, by way of example. I love this. The mother was stabbing an iron poker into the fireplace. Beside her were a seam ripper and a pair of sewing shears. She was going to disembowel the originals and burn their parts in the fire until their plush turned to ash, their plastic noses melted, and their marble eyes popped like chestnuts. Mwah, chef's kiss. Yes. Beautiful <laughs> description. Uh, you've yeah. got uh, teddies with their head streaming stuffing. Uh, yeah. At one point, uh, no spoilers, but there's some teddies that appear to have been burned alive. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, it's fun stuff. So, how did you decide where the boundary was for when the story was getting too dark, or was there one? Well, I mean, it, there is a certain freedom of to, to writing about teddy bears uh, because they are things of cloth and stuffing, and to a certain extent, you can damage them without. Um, without uh killing them you know like if, you, if i was dealing with human characters that i i would I would pull way back on the kind of uh um, abuse they were taking but kids i think understand toys like their own toys get broken and scuffed up and stained um and i wanted to place these teddy bears in a very realistic setting uh, there's nothing fairy tale about anything um, in their surroundings. They're in a, in a dump. They move into a city that is dirty, and they 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 travel down streets in gutters that are filled with 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 litter. Um, and the 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 stores they pass once they get in, they get into a city are realistic. You know, they 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 pass a check cashing place and. Um, you know, places that, that you don't generally see in books like this, but feel like they're part of a uh, city kid's every single day reality. Uh, so it felt it would it would have felt cowardly of me to to dodge that kind of thing. I mean, this is just uh, there's no point to dodge things that are that kids see every single day and they don't disturb them. You know, these things are real. So so for me, I. And I, you know, not every book is going to be for every kid. That's that's for certain. But for me, as a as a young reader, a book like this would have really excited me, precisely because it did things that I wasn't expecting and went places I didn't think it was going to go. Uh, and I think part of that is just the ambition of of wanting to to try to write something that the kids are going to be affected by and remember um and you know maybe if if we're really fortunate remember for the rest of their life you know and i remember reading this book and it and it scared me a little but because of that uh i never forgot it and it it, it taught me things and it taught me where some of my boundaries were in in or weren't even more importantly for me as a young reader um in reading and consuming art and um, and just navigating the world, uh, I am. I, I guess. I guess in the the kid lit space, I am. Uh, a, you know, a little bit of a button pusher in the sense I, I want to to push things a little bit because that's what inspired me as a young reader. Makes a lot of sense. I would have absolutely adored this book in third, fourth grade. Uh, but I was a weirdo, and there yeah. I know a lot of other weirdos that will absolutely in, uh, gravitate toward this book and have just the best time. Well, one more uh, question about the teddies, and then we we, we got to talk Romero and zombies. Um, but these teddies are awfully fatalistic uh, throughout. Uh, I, I I thought of them almost as Mr. Meeseeks for the Rick and Morty fans because their 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 goal initially, at least, is to accomplish their teddy duty uh, so they can fall into the forever sleep. Um, and they, um, you know, at one point, uh, Buddy is uh, facing his first little bit of adversity, I think chapter two or chapter three, and he's immediately like, oh, I wish I was in the forever sleep so I wouldn't have to deal with this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then Reginald routinely is assuring everybody they're not going to make it throughout. Yeah, right. Uh, 
Oh, <laughs> but the characters are compelling. I I rooted for them. Um, so how do how do you create these fatalistic characters without tipping the story toward why should I care what happens to the petties if they don't? Well, I mean, it's not that they don't care. It's that at the beginning of the story, they're completely unequipped for the world, and what they one of the few things that they know the teddies are born with this knowledge is that they're supposed to be on a store shelf and the kids they're going to be chosen by a child the child's going to hug them and they're going to drift away into this thing they call forever sleep which just means they just become a normal happy blissfully unaware toy uh and they think that's what they want and the book is sort of about them being forced to to uh, change their their fate has been changed, so they have to react to that in a new kind of way. They have to become a different kind of Teddy. Uh, they're they're no one. They they come to realize no one's coming to the dump to pick them up and hug them. They're going to have to leave the dump and find children. Uh, so they're it's not that they're fatalistic, but at the beginning, they just don't know what to do. They're supposed to be picked up. Someone's supposed to come help them. You know, it's, imagine you're a kid and you're you're left behind somewhere. Like your first instinct, it might just be to stand in a in a spot and wait for your parents to come back. But after a while, you do start to sense, okay, they're not coming. I need to I need to somehow start to work to get myself out of this situation. Find another adult, something. Uh, in this case, they've got to get out of the dump. Um, and then from there, they pick up new clues about where they should be going, what they should be doing. Um, and as far as Reginald goes, I just find him humorous. Uh, <laughs> I, I just like, you know, the other the other characters do as they begin to accomplish things and actually begin to persevere over adversity. They start to be a little more bold and even proud at their accomplishments. Uh, uh, Reginald is just a, a funny um, cynical character who just whose catchphrase is "We're not going to make it. <laughs> We're never going to make it." Um, but I think, particularly as the story wears on, um, readers may start to sense that he doesn't really believe that that um, he's impressed by what they're accomplishing too, um, and all the Teddies as a unit are impressing themselves and building a confidence in themselves and just as important in their community as a group. You know, they become proud of what a Teddy can do. You know, they're doing things that no Teddies have ever done. And they begin to realize that and they and they begin to feel excited by their own accomplishments. And to me, those are the moments in the book that really uh, that I really love is seeing them start to grow and from helpless things into creatures of of agency and um, and motivation and confidence. Hopefully, by uh, book three, they're going to be uh, battle-tested warriors. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're getting there. 